Hi, my name's Ben Lackey. I lead the partner architecture team at Neo4j. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how Neo4j works with Google Cloud. So let's get started. Neo4j and Google have worked together for a long time in uh, ever-increasing capacities. We've had a strategic partnership since 2019. That was really kicked off by the 3PIC, or Third Party First Class, launch, where Neo4j launched our SaaS product, Neo4j Aura DB, on Google Cloud. As part of that, we were also part of the Anthos Ready Partner Initiative. Because our SaaS product is built on top of a Kubernetes operator, and runs inside of GKE. Neo4j is a premier partner and we're Google Cloud ready. As part of our partnership, we've won Technology Partner of the Year twice in a row uh, in 2023 and again in 2024. And then we've been a launch partner on all sorts of interesting initiatives since then. Uh, we were a launch partner for Google's Generative AI, which has grown into the Gemini offerings. And more recently, we were a launch partner for Google Distributed Cloud, uh, Google's Edge environment that can be deployed outside of Google data centers. So really deep, interesting partnership. We have an enormous number of customers running on Google Cloud. These are some of our public references. Uh, they tend to cross over verticals. So we see customers in government or customers in the finance space, in pharmaceuticals. Uh, there are all sorts of use cases where graph databases and connected uh, data can offer value. Neo4j is really easy to use on Google Cloud. As I mentioned a moment ago, uh, we launched our managed service, our software as a service, Neo4j Aura DB in 2019. And since then, we've continued to invest in that and improve that, offering a variety of different product tiers, all available in the Google Marketplace. And a little later in this video, uh, I'll actually pull up the Marketplace and we can walk through and show how you would deploy that and get started. Of course, once you have a database deployed, you probably want to use it in some way and get data into your database. To that end, Neo4j has worked with Google on integrations with a bunch of uh, different Google Cloud services. Probably the simplest way to load data into your database is from cloud storage. And Neo4j offers a Cypher command Cypher is our query language that you can run in the database that can easily load data from Google Cloud Storage. But then there are um, kind of more powerful yet complex integrations with different services as well. So we've worked with Google on Dataflow templates that can load data from Cloud Storage or BigQuery. Uh, similarly, we offer a JDBC driver that can be dropped into Dataflow and then we even offer yet another way to connect to BigQuery, a BigQuery connector uh, that's a native integration that can very, very efficiently load data. Beyond that, we have capabilities for real-time data transfer using the Neo4j connector for Apache Kafka. And then there are abilities to integrate with the Spark ecosystem through the Neo4j connector for Apache Spark. One more way to talk to the database is using our database drivers. And those are available in a number of different languages, uh, Java, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, to name a few. And one way to use those drivers is to drop them into a cloud function and invoke the driver from there. Finally, the, the most cutting edge thing is probably uh, working with Vertex AI and Gemini. With Vertex AI, we see a bunch of use cases around feature engineering. And then Gemini, well, let me move to the next slide. So 
Neo4j has been used with Gemini for a while now in really two ways. This diagram seeks to represent both of them. On the left side of the diagram, we see a data load scenario. So I might have data sources that are structured, unstructured, I might have ontologies, and I can take all that data and I can dump it into Gemini and use Gemini to extract a graph structure from that data. And Gemini can actually create Cypher queries that can then be run against the Neo4j graph database to populate the database and build a knowledge graph. Similarly, on the right side of the diagram, we can consume that knowledge graph using Gemini. So in this case, some end application, uh, enterprise knowledge search, or customer service, or anything like that, can make a call into Gemini, which then converts that call into a Cypher and queries the database. This has been termed a graph RAG approach, a RAG for retrieval augmented generation, a really common model of uh, querying vector databases. But we offer something kind of unique on top of that in that we can do those vector queries, but at the same time that can land you in some neighborhood in the graph which you can explore and take advantage of that graph structure for better results. Right. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to the Google Cloud Console, and we can walk through getting started with Neo4j or a DB Professional. All right. So now we're in the Google Cloud Console. Uh, you can get here by going to console.cloud.google.com. I already have an account. If you don't have an account, it's really easy to sign up for a free trial. Uh, that comes with $300 in free credit and I believe is good for 90 days. At any rate, if I go to this little search bar here and I just type in uh, Neo4j, my first search result is Neo4j Aura. So I'm gonna click on that. And what I see here is the Neo4j Aura page in Google Cloud Marketplace. I've already subscribed to this listing. Uh, if you've never used it before, you'll see slightly different buttons with like a subscribe rather than a manage. But if you click subscribe and go through, your screen will look like mine. At any rate, I'm gonna click on this, manage on provider and that's gonna punch me out of the Google site, uh, carrying over all my context to the Neo4j console. So this will allow me to pay for Neo4j through the marketplace, and then it's also gonna allow me to authenticate using uh, my Google creds, which is a really cool integration. So I'm just gonna click on that and use that account to log in to Neo4j Aura. And now I'm in the Neo4j Aura console. And you can see I'm in an org called Marketplace and a tenant called GCP Marketplace. Uh, I can create an instance by clicking on this button. And there are a few different product tiers. Uh, because I punched out a Marketplace, the only one available to me is Professional. So I'm going to select that. And this is a pay-as-you-go option for deploying uh, Neo4j. The default is four gigabyte with one CPU, and that's a, a great starter deployment, 200-some uh, bucks a month, all reasonable. And I'm going to call this instance Ben1 because I share this account with some other people and I want them to know it's mine. Right. So now I'm just gonna hit create and be very careful to copy my password because I might want it later. And I'm also gonna hit download so I get a copy of my creds. And that creds file can be used later by a program, uh, say something using the Neo4j driver to load that in and authenticate to the database. Now it takes a little bit for the data base to deploy and become available. 
Great. So we're back. And it took about a minute for the database to deploy and become available. Now I see, you know, Ben one here, it's running. You can see it's on Google, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I pop open this metrics tab, it's not really going to have anything yet since this instance doesn't have any runtime history. But I can click here and say connect, and there are two different options. One's for query, one's for explore. Uh, explore gives you access to our BI tool, uh, Bloom, but that's not going to be that interesting yet because our database doesn't have any data in it. So I'm going to hit Query, and it auto-populates uh, the URL of the database. I'm going to paste in the password that I grabbed earlier, and I'm going to hit Connect. And this thing connects up, and you can see here on the left, the database has no nodes, nor relationships, nor property keys. It's empty. Uh, over here, you can see we've run a couple commands automatically. We ran connect, and then we ran this welcome command. And this little field here, I can enter in any Neo4j command uh, and just you know run it and see what happens. Uh, so like rerun welcome, and it's still there. Uh, there are a couple nice getting started guides. Uh, I kind of like this one if we click here and then there's this link to load Northwind. Uh, if you've been around a while, Northwind uh, was the data set that came with uh, Microsoft SQL Server and like NT4, I think, a while ago. Uh, so I'm going to click load and this directs me over to the Neo4j data importer. And that's already pre-populated, but you can see this whole data model uh, that shows a graph that I'm going to load in. And if I click on one of these nodes, I see in this case it's loading from a file called products.csv, and it's going to load you know, product, quantity, units, all these different fields. Right, so in order to have that happen, all I need to do is click this run import, it sort of takes a second to get started and then kind of chugs away, does its thing, and now everything's loaded in. And if I'm curious what it did underneath, I can click on Show Cipher here and see that it created a constraint. Uh, I think of this kind of like a, a key in a SQL database. And then uh, it ran a Cipher statement that loaded in that data. And I can do that for any of the files it loaded in. But I'm going to click on this uh, explore results thing. And this is going to kick us over to Bloom, that business intelligence tool I just mentioned. And now that we load it up, you can see, hey, we have a little data in here. And I can zoom in and I can see, like, here's a sales manager. And apparently their territory is New York and so on. And I can poke around the graph and rearrange it and, you know, just see what it's up to. I can also click on this go back to query here. And here, let me exit out of the tutorial. And you can see here on the left, our database now has stuff in it. So like if I click on employee here, it auto generates a query. Just show me the employees. I can make this guy a little bigger and zoom in. And like, here's a sales rep, uh, apparently last name Devoid. Oh, I, well, yeah, anyway. Uh, and if I want, I can click on this guy and expand it and see all the nodes he's connected to, which is a lot. Oh, or she, I guess, is Nancy Devolio. Okay, gotta get that right. Um, anyway. I can see all these uh, different orders that Nancy had worked on and just explore the graph. So that's kind of our crash course in uh, getting started with Neo4j Aura uh, on Google Cloud. I hope you enjoyed that demo. If you have any questions, uh, you can always reach out to ecosystem at neo4j.com. 
If you'd just like to learn more on your own, uh, you can check out our partner page at neo4j.com slash Google. And finally, it's really easy to get started using Neo4j or a professional on Google Marketplace, just as we did. Good luck.